Bang, bang, baby. It's a new day. So this video is part of a two-part series on advanced sky replacement considerations. This part one is primarily going to cover creative color applications after you've made your sky replacement. On this mountain scene, I'm going to show you very quickly how you can choose the sky so that it aligns with the global lighting and shadow patterns of your scene, and then how to apply creative color adjustments. Then I'm going to take this night photograph and show you how to totally swap out to the new night sky with one of the new night sky packets that's offered by Adobe. And then I'm going to show you some creative color adjustments specifically for the foreground to choose the image that you want to have. So let's get started. Yes! All right, so how do we make this image look like this one with a sky replacement? So let's start at the beginning. Essentially, once you have your image open, you go over to Photoshop menu at the top, choose Edit, go down to Sky Replacement. You need to choose a sky where the lighting matches the scene. So here, the sunlight is coming from left to right, right? It's coming from over here, and it's, the cast shadow is this way. So I've chosen a sky where the light is more on the left, making it look like it's more coming from this direction. And actually, I, I like what it's done, so I'm gonna click OK. You know by now, but if you don't, remember it puts everything it did in its own layer group. I'll toggle that down just so my layers panel is a little better. Now, I personally like to have control over my foreground, so I will grab the selection tool, right bracket key to make a bigger brush, and just select my mountain range. And remember, if your selection tool doesn't seem to be working right, chances are you're not on the right layer. So just double check that. And once you've made your selection, always go up to Select and Mask. And just take a look. I like to toggle on Smart Radius from 1 to 2 pixels. I like to smooth it 1 to 2, and usually half a pixel to almost a whole pixel of feathering, depending on what it is. I always like to output to a new layer with Layer Mask. I'll click OK. And whenever we do this, it turns off whatever we were working on. So I need to turn that back on. And I'm going to take that layer and pull it above the sky group and watch the left and right edges of the top of the mountain. I'll turn it off and on. So you see how they got brighter? Because basically I'm not letting Photoshop fade that sky into my foreground because I want more control. Now, once you've done this, push all that to its own layer. But before you do, I think we need to tweak the color tint of this mountain to match this sky. So what I would do is I would add a color balance adjustment layer. Now, right now, anything we do is going to affect everything in the image. So what I need to do is I need to clip this just to my mountain range. Hold down the Alt or Option key to clip any adjustment layer to the layer directly under it. Now I can add just a little bit of cyan and a little bit of blue, and then I lost some contrast, right? Remember, if you hold down the Alt or Option key and click on any layer, it turns off all the other layers. I'm gonna select that layer, Command or Control L to look at my histogram, and yep, I'm missing all my dark tones, and I don't have a lot of bright tones. I'm gonna cancel that, Alt or Option, click on that eyeball again. I'm gonna come back up here, and I'm going to add a Levels Adjustment layer. Hold down the Alt or Option key to clip it again to just my mountain. And I just want to give it a bit of contrast so it doesn't look so muddy. I'll brighten up the midtones just a touch. Now, after I've done all that, I'm going to hit Command, Option, Shift, Letter E. I want everything to be pushed up to the very top layer. I'm going to select everything we've done between the very top layer and the background layer by Shift-clicking. Hit Command or Control-G to put it in a group, just so I can say, I came from here, and now I'm here. I like where this is going. The only other thing I would do is maybe I want this foreground to have a red tinge to it. So I would come back, add another color balance, pull it over to red. And I like, actually, I like what that's doing. It's contaminating the sky. The, the, the gray clouds are becoming more red. The mountains are becoming more red. So I'm going to come grab the gradient tool, make sure black's in my foreground. And I'm just going to click and drag a gradient. And I can redraw it, and it will reconfigure it constantly. But what I'm trying to do is get kind of a bluey mountain and sky and this warm foreground. So this is a night image. Again, with everything you approach, ask yourself, can it look stronger if it were cropped? I would suggest that having 20% of the image be this texture concrete, I don't think is adding a lot to this particular image. So I would hit the crop tool. So I like that. I'm going to hit enter. I had delete crop pixels, so it literally got rid of it forever. Now I'm going to come over and replace the sky. I'm going to edit down to sky replacement. And remember with those new packs that are there. So I'm going to toggle this down, close that. So these are all the new packs you can download. And I have a video about that uh, that you can find in, in my channel. We have actually a night skies pack now. So let's toggle that open. And no notice what it's doing. It's actually keeping the moon. Like it's sophisticated enough that it's wanting to keep the moon. I don't know that we will. I'm going to choose that night sky, see what that looks like. This night sky. 
I think I like that one better. Maybe this night sky. That one is also nice. I think I'll go with that one. And you have this slider where you can bring this dialog box up. You can always resize this dialog box if you want to have bigger images to look at and scale them up. When you want to close this box, you have to click on the sky replacement dialog box right behind it, and it makes the foreground one disappear. You then have the ability to make your sky bluer or yellower, you know, depending on what, what is more important to you. You have all these other adjustments. I'm just going to click OK. I'm going to click the Move tool to get rid of that. Hit Command or Control Zero to fit in screen. Now, I personally don't think this particular moon is going to fit in this scene. And this night sky is a bit grainy, noisy. Let's take a look at that. Well, where am I? I'm at 456%, so everything's going to look bad there. I command minus just to zoom back out. That's 100%. That's what it would look like if it were printed. So there's a ton of noise and grain, which does happen with night photography. Command or control zero. So I don't like that moon. Where is it at? If you see that right here, if you alter option click on any layer mask, it'll show it to you. And if you don't like the layer mask, just find it. Hit B for brush. And I need to make that black moon white, right? Because white reveals, black conceals. I'll hit X to bring white to my foreground. And I must be painting at a low percentage. I am. So I'm going to just drag that over with the scrubby slider to 100%. A scrubby slider is when you hover over a word and your cursor changes to a left or right pointing arrow. And you just drag it back and forth to vary the opacity. And I must be painting at a low percentage. I am. So I'm going to just drag that over with the scrubby slider to 100% and click again. So did you notice that? My brush is bigger than this moon, but it still didn't get rid of the whole moon in one click. That's because it fades out from the center. So I either have to change the, the hardness of my brush or just hold and paint around. That's all you gotta do. Now you see that there's a little bit of fading in going around the edge of the building. That's perfectly okay. I'm gonna click on that eyeball for the sky replacement group. Now my moon is gone. So next thing I would like to do, I think I would like to just select that sky all by itself. Go over to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and pop over to the Detail area. Pull up the Noise Reduction application and the Color Noise Reduction application. Go over to Basic. I definitely like it to be a bit more blue. I'd probably like it to have a little bit more gravitas and yeah, a little contrast, mid-tone contrast there. And I'll click OK. See what that looks like back in Photoshop. I really like that. I think that's that's a nice contrast of, of scenery, but I need to integrate them a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command, Option, Shift, Letter E, push everything to the top, hit Command J, Control J for Windows users. Now I have the ability to go back over to Camera Raw and work on a throwaway in case, you know, maybe I go a little too crazy. And I think you should try to go a little too crazy because you never know how far is too far unless you've gone there. And then it's very easy to back up a little bit. Okay, we're definitely getting it a, a little, little crazy. And this is, in my mind, you go to Camera Raw at the end of your processing because that's where you start applying your vision, your brand. And if you come up with something you like, you save it as a preset so you don't have to go through all this investigation every time. And then I go to Effects. I think this would have a stronger vignette. Click OK and turn these off. So we went from here to here. Created a wonderfully new and dramatic sky. Could you go further? Maybe. Hit Command or Control J and add a hue saturation adjustment layer and just drag the hue slider and see if there's anything you like about the sky, about the foreground. I gotta say, I think I like a little bit of that blue foreground. Now the sky goes a little crazy. Let's try it. How do we try it? So let's make our life easy. Let's go all the way back to the background layer, hold the Alt or Option key, and I'm gonna try to select subject and go to the object selection tool and see if it can figure out what it is I want. I didn't select that layer. It's going to have a hard time. Now maybe it can figure out what I want. And I can help it just by doing this. I did a pretty good job because I don't want the trees. I do want to get that little bit of foreground there. And I'll make sure my edges are a little... I'm going to click OK. So what did I just do? I just basically created a layer mask for this. But I want to use it somewhere else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on those top two layers where I was. I'm gonna take this layer, click and drag it on top of this layer mask, and it applies it immediately for me. And now I can say, hmm, do I like that? Well, now it looks too blue, but I can always now go back to hue and saturation and readjust, because it's non-destructive. And now I'm just adjusting the foreground to figure out, oh, maybe I'd like it to contrast with, with that blue sky. Maybe I like it more red, or maybe I would like it more, more greenish yellow. Maybe I'd like it more green. Or I do like purple. Or no, I like this warmth here. 
So you have that ability for control in your images, and I definitely suggest you take it. And then after you've done all that even, push it to its own layer. Pop back over once again to the camera raw filter. Make some more uh, editing. Like may maybe I need to pull the saturation down just a touch, but pull the vibrance up. Maybe I still need another application of dehaze and clarity. Vignette again. I can go back to the basic, maybe make it a touch brighter. Then I can always go up to edit, fade camera raw filter, and I can pull that back. That percentage of everything I did, just I can lower it by 40%. Click OK. So where do we come from? We started here. Nice, solid shot. But we pushed it to here. Feel free to push your images. Hey, if you like this video and it helped, you can help me. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack it. Take care. I like subscribers. That's awesome. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here. <laughs>